Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Star Horrors Review with my hat. We need the hat because, uh, for some reason, lots of people that work on Star Wars wear hats like this. I always thought that was weird. I think it's just George Lucas and maybe Dave Filoni, but... You know, George Lucas is not a man that should wear a hat. Like, we should just start there. <laughs> That's what we should come out first in the review. <laughs> oh. But seriously, though, he's not a man that should wear a hat. Clearly, he is a man that should make movies, though, because, like, I don't know. I, I've been trying to rewatch the original episode for A New Hope, Star Wars, and this is, like, my thoughts after watching it again and again like to be honest I've seen it so many times that I'm kind of bored with this movie and I hate watching it and having watched it now this many times in a row trying to see it all in one shot without falling asleep you know it makes you really question as to how good this movie was but like it was really good the first few times you saw it Some of the special effects I remember being particularly good back in the day on VHS before all the special editions and all of that shit. I remember loving them on VHS. Which, you know, maybe that isn't the best way to watch Star Wars. But it's considerably better than waiting until the prequels came out and then seeing them first. Which a whole bunch of people did. I'm kind of looking at Star Wars while I'm talking to you about this, and uh, it's at the point right now where they're escaping Tatooine. They're escaping Tatooine and the the flying Winnebago with wings, the fucking <laughs> Millennium Falcon, the dirtiest ship in the entire galaxy. That's what it looks like. It's a bachelor's apartment that flies through space, which is basically, I think what George Lucas was going for with it because that's whatever man really wants if he thinks about it. A bachelor pad that you can just park on any random planet. It's pretty dope. It does make sense now that he won it from Lando Calrissian. Because you know Lando appreciates himself a good bachelor pad that you can go around and park on any planet. Have a chessboard and light speed drive and fucking... I don't know what else you need, really. They have a little training ball to train the Jedi and the lightsaber shit. Church. Grand Moff Tarkin. It is sad that they brought him back to life, I think. I probably shouldn't just watch this and do commentary, but like that's, I tried to do a review on this like six different times now, and this is the only way it's gonna get done, really. It's kind of sad that there's not more that, at least I don't feel there's more to say about Star Wars, really, other than that, you know, the effects are such a mixed bag now from all the fucking special editions and remaking and whatever that like it looks good Star Wars legitimately looks good it just doesn't look like Star Wars anymore and that's not even so much this movie that's this movie still looks like Star Wars it's the new ones that don't the new ones lost the magic somewhere Aldernan just got blown up. No, I can feel like a thousand voices cried out and were suddenly silenced. Because I'm Alec Guinness, and you're lucky I'm in this piece of shit. Because I'm Alec Guinness, and I've played... I don't know what the fuck else he played other than this, but he's a very famous actor. Prince Faisal, for one. He played Prince Faisal in... Uh, 
What's that movie called? Lawrence of Arabia. About a billion other things too. Like at this time when he made this, he could have made almost anything he wanted. And he made this, I think mostly because they let him change the name of laser swords to lightsabers and they gave him several points on the uh, the gross of the movie or whatever, like the, the money they made off of the movie. Alec Guinness's family is still getting royalties from Star Wars. Isn't that fucking nuts? He got like one or two percent of the gross. <laughs> I'm not using the word gross right there. He probably didn't get part of the gross. He got part of the profits. This is where we should have a lesson about math. Gross is the entire amount of money you make versus the profits, which is the entire amount of money that you made minus out whatever it cost you to make the movie. So it's how much money you actually made. That's what he gets a percentage of. I kind of feel bad for Mark Hamill. I think he got fucked out of his sequel trilogy. Like, I do not understand leaving him completely out of the entire first movie, The Force Awakens. That was a mistake. Oh, wow. The lightsaber looks bad. I just realized that. It's the training scene with Han Solo and, like, clearly it, it looked like, you know, the saber's here and the blade's, like, this way. That's the kind of shit that I'm talking about, but in one version of this, I had a spiel that was pretty good about how the effects aren't like they used to be. And the, the effects aren't like they used to be. Like, it used to be effects were kind of shitty things to get you through a given thing until you got back to where it was just people talking. You know? So, like, the lightsaber effect didn't need to be that great because... It wasn't going to be on that long. <laughs> and like this helps with costs and shit too. But like the, the thing that's cheap in a movie is two people talking. With a background. Like that doesn't cost hardly shit. And you know as a result of that. It seems to be at least what most movies try to be mostly. Star Wars is an effects heavy sci-fi epic. You know, it's a little different. It kills me anymore to see modern movies make horrible, horrible movies with unlimited budgets. And one of the ways that they really do this, I feel, is special effects. No amount of special effects is going to correct the fact that your movie sucks. And it sucks because you suck at the whole two people talking in front of a green screen thing. You know, I'm not really sure how to make that better, to be honest. I, you'd have to get the actors at a place to where, you know, I say green screen. I was, wasn't talking about green screens before. I was talking about just any kind of generic background. But the green screen is the ultimate, you know, like, it's the ultimate version of this problem. Because it takes away all of the distractions, distractions. And makes it to where it's literally just two people talking. And then you have whatever's going on in the background with the green screen. But usually that is of no consequence. It's much like, you know, Star Wars. The Millennium Falcon doesn't need to be behind Han Solo in every shot here. However, they're in the Millennium Falcon. So you're going to have to figure out how you, the fuck that works. Right? Easiest way to do that is just to build a Millennium Falcon and shoot inside it. Maybe that's all. That's that's what they did on the new ones. I don't know if that's a hundred percent right. On the old ones, they built the pieces that they needed for the shots they needed. I don't think there was ever seriously an entire Millennium Falcon just there. You know, it would have made things easier. I think that's kind of where J.J. Abrams' thing was: is if we're going to be filming Star Wars movies going forward, let's build this as a real fucking set. That's kind of what. Uh, what's his face did on the Hobbit too when they made the Hobbit uh, they quit fucking around and just built fucking Hobbiton and it's like an attraction you can go and see now 
that was the idea, at least on the Force Awakens uh, Millennium Falcon, which I think they built in Pinewood Studios, London. And I think it's still there. I think they're taking up a whole stage with it for the next however many umpteen years because we're going to be making Star Wars movies, but now they aren't making Star Wars movies, so they're probably going to tear that shit down. You know, at least Hobbiton, there was a plan, you know? They're getting taken into the Death Star now. The fact that the Death Star and Tatooine were George Lucas's answer to budgetary problems is great. I don't know if you know this or not, but basically it's really cheap to shoot in a desert and it's really cheap to shoot in a Death Star because you design what it looks like on the inside and you make it just a bunch of big panels. <laughs> That's literally what they did on the inside of the Death Star is everything that you see is sections of hallway that can be like popped out and moved around and rearranged to do different shots and shit with like these plastic panels. The inside of the Death Star is cheap as shit. The only thing cheaper than the inside of the Death Star is the desert. Which, to be honest, I think George Lucas was a big fan of Dune. Because, basically, Han Solo is smuggling spice. And Dune is on a desert world that's called Arrakis, right? Like, Tatooine is like this universe's version of Arrakis, I guess. But we never see any big sandworms or any of that shit. I just always thought it was interesting that it's very clear that whoever wrote Star Wars liked the book Dune. I say whoever wrote Star Wars because a lot of it was written by George Lucas, but a lot of it was not. I think a lot of it was he and his buddies smoking and drinking and whatever inspired him to write various things. And uh, I, my bet would be that he had friends of his take entire shots at the script for this. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that, but at least sections of it. Some of it's just too well thought out and well done to all be from the mind of George Lucas, knowing what we know about him now. And that basically he's, it's not like he's a no talent ass clown. He's very talented. He is just like the magic man at the top that makes the whole thing work. He's not the guy that bakes the whole cake. He's the, he's the bridegroom sitting on top of the cake. They're going in to scan the Millennium Falcon. Hey, you down there. Come give us a hand so we can steal your uniforms. thing I never understood was why wouldn't you steal the scanner guy's uniforms? Like. That never made sense why you would want the fucking helmet and all that shit. I guess so it hides who you are. But no one knew who they were. They could have just worn the Imperial outfits. a gigantic Death Star. You know, it's not like it's, you know, the Rishi Mays outpost of four fucking clone troopers who sit there and, like, talk shit at each other all day. Those ones, you probably wouldn't get past at all, right? The Death Star commandos, there's like 80 fucking billion of them, and some of them wear suits and some of them don't. You had two of the, two of the guys that weren't wearing the fucking armor... There, I don't know. That, this never made sense to me. Well, I think I'm going to call this it. Maybe. Let's try to wrap it up. I've just basically been doing commentary over the midsection of the movie. Let's turn that off and uh, wind up here so is Star Wars a good movie still 
that's that's my real question after trying to watch it so many times and like falling asleep so many times i i don't know it is the thing that started off the whole series or whatever but to be honest with you i don't really care for episode four that much anymore you know i always really liked empire strikes back better than any of the rest of these movies and you know maybe we'll have to watch that next but i've been trying to make this video for two weeks so maybe some other time you know yeah that or i'll fucking go watch it and do another one just like this I think it's interesting, though, that a movie that we all love as much as Star Wars, I know for a fact many, many of my friends, if they watched it, would have the same issue of falling the fuck asleep in the goddamn thing. What does it say about us that we love a movie so much that we fall asleep in? It could be one of those things, like, it's comforting enough that, like, everyone just kind of you know, hits that childhood vibe and then goes to sleep. Could be. Could be that it's legitimately a little boring. It was made in the 70s. But, like, I prefer movies made in the 70s, to be honest. Like, 70s and 80s movies are so much better than today's movies. And even, like, 90s stuff. Like, I, this isn't about that, but 90s movies are good, too. I need to, like, figure out, like, the years in which I like movies. Because, like, there's definitely, like, a few decades span there where good movies were made. And it seems to have ended decidedly at uh, whenever Disney bought Lucasfilm. Everything since then has just gone to hell in a handbasket, at least with all the shit that I cared for. We still have stuff like Christopher Nolan making a picture here and there that's great or whatever. Or, you know, the the writer-director will still make a good movie no matter what. However, I don't think there's any other good way to make a movie. Not anymore. Star Wars and many of these other movies in the that time frame I'm talking about... It wasn't a writer-director. It was a writer and a director and an editor and a studio and <laughs> a whole army of people. And when you do that, that's when you get true greatness. That's when you get shit like Star Wars and Indiana Jones. You don't get that stuff through one man off on his own, usually. You get that through a collaborative process. And it's sad to me to see our movie industry at such a point as I I don't think I'll ever see a movie in theaters again I debate going to see Oppenheimer but that's mostly because I kind of want to see the big explosion on the big screen and a lot of money is being put into the effects shop for that so it should be pretty interesting I would think I don't know Star Wars 77 put me to sleep. I'll see you guys later.